Good Wednesday evening to you. It is uh, the edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on the 16th day of March, into the second half of March now here in 2022. And we had a fantastic day weather-wise today. We'll make it two in a row coming up for tomorrow. Wanted to start out this evening with a little geology geeks or earthquake geeks, if you uh, will. You may have uh, seen that a pretty major earthquake occurred off the coast of Japan this morning, about midnight local time, but here in the eastern time zone in the U.S., this was about 10.30 a.m. or so. Uh, and while, of course, we didn't feel anything around here, earthquakes don't work like that, the seismic waves from the earthquake can be felt across the globe. Now, this is way down under the surface of the Earth, but this is a, a seismograph reading or a, a Holasa recorder reading from uh, Trump, or, uh, Columbiana County, I should say, and right in through here. See where all these lines get squirrely and wiggly? This is a seismograph in Columbiana County, Ohio, picking up on the waves rippling under the surface of the earth from that major 7.3 magnitude earthquake off the uh, coast of Japan. This uh, was many orders of magnitude weaker than the earthquake that the same region experienced 11 years ago, back in 2011, but still 7.3 is a pretty major uh, earthquake event. And again, that was off the east coast of Japan. First thing this morning. Got a couple of questions on, on Facebook about feeling it around here. And again, that's really not how earthquakes work. Uh, we wouldn't feel an earthquake off the coast of Japan here uh, locally, but these seismographs can feel them, uh, again, way, way underneath the Earth's surface. So that's always kind of a, an interesting thing and a cool thing to check out. It's clear on the other side of the globe, it's still something that uh, is rippling in waves, probably still this evening, around the globe, these little ripples in the, in the uh, you know, kind of the, the wake of a major earthquake. All right, back here in eastern Ohio and western PA today, a high-resolution satellite view of the region showing a lot of bare ground, a lot of brown ground. It'll be interesting to see how much this greens up over the next few weeks. It'll be interesting to uh, compare this to maybe in mid-April, on a clear day in mid-April. Maybe you can see a lot more green coming up in a few weeks. But in the meantime, we can also see that pretty much all of our area lakes now are primarily ice-free. Some patches of ice perhaps here and there, but primarily ice-free. Lake Erie is down to about 10% ice coverage now after peaking a handful of weeks ago up around 90% or so. Pretty much a cloud-free afternoon with the exception of a few fair weather uh, cumulus clouds out there uh, today. Let me real quickly, uh, I forgot to get this loaded up beforehand, but I wanted to show you uh, this time lapse from Youngstown today. This is looking to the uh, kind of east-southeast, and you'll see the moon set uh, this morning on the right-hand side of your screen. There it goes, full moon in a couple of days. F a few fair weather, lazily uh, happening cirrus clouds out there, uh, in the cumulus clouds, I should say, uh, this afternoon. Just a, a fantastic kind of April-like day for today. The numbers at the airport today, 68 on the high side. That's 8 degrees shy of the record of 76. So 1945, 34 was the pretty balmy low this morning. Average lows at this time of the year are still in the upper 20s, and records tend to be in the single digits. Pretty decent pace, uh, space station flyby. We haven't had one in the evening hours in a while. Now, this will be pretty brief, only lasting about three minutes, but about 9.07 in the southwest sky, about 10 degrees above the horizon. This will climb to about 56 degrees above the horizon just before it disappears in the south sky about three minutes later, so uh, you got to check this one out pretty fast. It's uh, some space station flybys last five or six minutes, even seven minutes. This one's a shorter one, but worth checking out with uh, just a partly cloudy sky over this evening. I'll put up a reminder on social media. The main weather player across the eastern U.S. this evening is this low spinning down across the deep south. The flooding problems around Birmingham, Alabama today. There's been more severe weather in parts of Florida where a severe thunderstorm watch is still out for places such as Orlando. An interesting day uh, tomorrow in terms of equal day and night. Uh, I talked about this a little bit last evening, but uh, tomorrow is what we call the equal lux. It's the actual day in which we have about roughly 12, 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of, of darkness. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, this is a little counterintuitive because, hey, the equinox is coming up this weekend, the start of spring. But because of our latitude and because of where we are in the eastern time zone and because of the different ways we define sunrise and sunset, in most locations, the equinox is not actually the day in which you have equal day and night. It, it occurs a few days before the equinox as we go into the spring season. And then in September, this 
uh, roughly 12 and 12 day occurs a few days after the equinox, usually somewhere around September 25th. All right, as we uh, go into our St. Patrick's Day, that uh, low that's bringing the unsettled weather to the deep south this evening, uh, scoots up the east coast, keeping all the moisture to our east. We'll have some clouds around for a time, partly to mostly sunny for the afternoon. Great St. Patrick's Day afternoon. Then clouds will increase on Friday, and I think shower chances will increase as we head into the evening, probably mostly after sunset Friday evening, and this will set the stage for a, an unsettled period for Friday night. Heading into Saturday with showers coming and going, probably some sunny intervals here and there on Saturday as well. Today, the Storm Prediction Center did issue their Day 3 Severe Weather Outlook uh, for Friday, uh, including a low-end 1 on a 1 to 5 scale risk for parts of central and southern Ohio. Actually, technically, this gets up to about Route 30. Um, I'm not real concerned at all about severe weather here locally, even in kind of this zone down towards Columbus and Dayton and places like that. Ah, it's it's a real low-end risk, I think. A couple of low-topped maybe small hail and wind producing storms might try to get going maybe just a couple of gusty showers in cincinnati and dayton and, and columbus and zanesville and cambridge and places like that around here friday night i can't rule out a rumble of thunder but we are not concerned about true severe weather we're also not concerned about accumulating snow over the next seven days this is a look at some of our medium range modeling through the middle of next week and as you can see basically nothing in terms of accumulating snow. That, no, that being said, if you've been watching Weather for Weather Geeks this week, you know I've been talking about a cooler trend in the longer range. I think that final weekend of March, coming up in about 10 days or so, will be pretty close to, if not below, average. And so the near 70 degree readings that we had today, and we'll have again tomorrow and even Friday, uh, will not be coming back anytime real soon, it looks like, as we head into a chillier pattern later in the month. We'll talk more about uh, the, the end of March and even the start of April, uh, what uh, will the long range have in store in future editions of this video. Thanks for watching tonight and hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday night.